Welcome to the Tame Trailblazer 2 Space Station. Okay, so for the space station, I'm going to actually have the students outside with the door closed for about 30 seconds to a minute, and I'll be saying something like this. In a minute, I'm going to open the door. I'm going to have you one at a time stop on one of the steps, put your hand on the side of your face, and wave hi to the special camera that you see straight across. But watch out for the orange and blue science fiction monster over there. I'm just kidding. That's what the camera makes you look like. As soon as you've seen your monster, you're gonna be moving all the way to the right, and the volunteer will show you where to stand. The first person is going to be standing with their back against the cabinet right inside this white corner on the floor here where they can still see the monitor. Then you're gonna line them up right along this cabinet. If you run out of space, it's okay to bring one of them over to your side. But we're going to put the last person on the left side of this silver step. I have an orange arrow here so they know where to stand. And then this is where you're going to take over and I'm going to close the door behind you. So you're going to tell this person, I need you to help me with an experiment. I want you to spread your fingers and put your hand on your shirt where we can see it on the monitor. Push as hard as you can and we'll do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, quickly move your hand and you see at least behind a handprint. The reason it does that is this is a thermal imaging camera. It works in the infrared spectrum. The hotter something is, the lighter the color. The colder it is, the darker the color. So we're gonna squeeze this for one second, pass it to the next person, show your hand to the camera so you can see how it makes your hand look like it has holes in it. When everyone has had a chance to squeeze the ice, go ahead and put it in the trash can we don't put it back in the ice chest for health reasons. Then the next thing, you, after they've, they've had a chance to all see that, I would suggest you sit right about here so you can get their attention and you'll tell them this. What we got going here is called heat transfer. The ice is colder than your hand. When you squeeze it with your, with your hand, your hand forces heat energy into the piece of ice. Now I want you to slap your hands together, rub them really hard and fast, and then I want you to show your hand to the camera again and you'll see how it dissipated the effects of the ice. By the way, it's a good way to dry your hands if there are no paper towels handy in the bathroom. Okay, so this is our relative gravity exhibit. There's a relationship between mass and gravity. The larger the planetary body you're standing on, the more gravity tends to pull down. So we have these four Coke cans weighted to weigh what a can of Coke would weigh on the Earth, the Moon, Jupiter, and the Sun. When you come by, put all four fingers underneath each can and just wiggle it with your fingers so you can feel how heavy or light each can is in relation to the other. When you're finished, loop back around to the back of the line so that we stay out of the way of the energy station. Now, once all the students get to do this, we're gonna be asking them some questions. So, which one of those four cans was the heaviest the answer should be the sun. Why do you think the sun would be the heaviest? The correct answer is because the sun is larger, so it has more mass, therefore it has more gravity. Which one was the lightest one? They should say the moon. Why do you think the moon would be the lightest one? Well, because the moon is the smallest, therefore it has the least amount of gravity. In fact, if you weighed about 100 pounds on Earth and we send you to the moon, you would weigh somewhere around 14 to 15 pounds. Now, you don't get any skinnier, you just get lighter. This tablet right here has a, has a program on it, an app called My Weight on Another Planet. So what we can do is we can put our weight in right here. For example, we're going to say this person weighs 125 and we're going to hit the calculate button. On Mercury, a 125 pound person would weigh about 48 pounds. On Venus, about 113 on Mars about 47 pounds and so on. When you get ready to go to the next person, hit the left arrow here at the bottom. That'll bring you back to this screen. You can touch up here, backspace, and then input the new weight and go to the next person. What we have here is spot the station. So uh, what's going on now? You're seeing it's starting to get dark. That's because the International Space Station is right here 
came out of the, the uh, lit sun side of the, of the Earth and is into the dark side. You can see it's going right over Europe right now, which happens to be going through nighttime. Typically, you would see a view of the Earth uh, as it looks from the International Space Station. The International Space Station is currently about 255 miles above the Earth, traveling at a speed of, one, of 17,158 miles per hour. So it's moving along pretty good. This is also a good way to see where the space station is if you ever want to get outside with a good pair of binoculars or a small telescope and actually be able to see it as it goes over the Earth. Okay, the last exhibit we have is our solar flares video. Solar flares are the most powerful explosion in our solar system. They are more than 1,000 times more powerful than our largest nuclear bomb. They shoot away from the surface of the sun some 10,000 miles or more. That's bigger than the Earth. But the sun averages about 93 million miles away from the Earth, so we don't feel the heat from those solar flares. But eight minutes later, whenever the energy gets to the Earth, it disrupts any kind of communications that send signals through the air. For example, have you ever been watching your favorite television show and the television messes up for a few seconds and straightens out? Those are solar flares. There's nothing that can be done about them, so don't bother to call the TV station. It's outside of what they can do. Also, sometimes you may be on your cell phone with a good strong signal and it drops the call anyway and you get mad at your cell phone carrier. It's probably solar flares. Wait about 60 seconds and try your call again. If it goes through, that's what it was. Would you like to hear what they sound like when they erupt? I don't need you to put your thumb on this side, and your finger here, and squeeze this together and let it go just like so. Okay, virtual reality is the last exhibit at the space station. What we're going to want to do is have the kids take these virtual reality goggles, hold them up to their face, and slowly move their head around and up and down, slowly so they don't get nauseated, and they'll have the opportunity to see the International Space Station from a 360-degree spe uh, spectrum. Okay, volunteers, at the end of each rotation of a group of students, make sure you take the opportunity to point to the career notations at the end of the at the bottom of the circular signs. They tell us what kind of careers are available and what kind of money the kids can expect to make in those careers.